invite our next speaker, uh, Dr. Venkatesh Balasubramaniam. Let me finish my job. He, he works in the design and uh, he works on various problem disruptive innovations in product process development. Uh, he also mentors, advises technology-based startups, SMEs, automotive industries, and strategic. Is quality the mantra in pursuit of excellence? Let's listen to Dr. Uh, first off, uh, uh, I'm a filler in space of my director who was supposed to be here. So uh, obviously, I'm not going to be giving you the same uh, uh, level of uh, this thing. And second, uh, we will just have a, a conversation or a general chat as we go by. Uh, is Tamil understood by everybody here? Yes. Okay. So in case if I flip to Tamil, uh, you can keep it at that uh, uh, this thing. So uh, very quickly. <laughs> Uh, so he was asking what could be a topic, uh, so I told Mr. Raj that, uh, uh, you know, keep it something provocative uh, so that at least people try to uh, wait and wake up. So now, what's, what is quality? So I'll, I'll start, uh, I mean, I used to be teaching a bit of uh, this to industry for a while. And when I saw Dr. VK's name, I was impressed because when he was at NMCC, I, uh, we together ran a few uh, programs uh, in the manufacturing space. So, uh, so, so coming back, uh, so the first time that actually asked me, forced me to think was a conversation in a property that uh, I got inherited and, uh, you know, it was getting distracted and to build by a builder. Uh, and the conversation was going, this builder is better, that builder is better. And mostly, uh, I mean, I would call uncles and aunties, but today's generation, I think most of you will call. But otherwise, would have called tatas and parties. And one tata or one uncle suddenly stopped and say, asked, Ella uh, quality, quality, soldering, lapna quality na enna pa soldra. Uh, at which point there was an absolute silence for a while. I mean, all these people uh, were fairly uh, big in uh, industry and so on and so forth. So you start looking at it from a, uh, a different perspective and other things. So to hash back what I work on is, I uh, uh, work on design thinking approach, essentially identifying a problem and solving a problem as Subra had mentioned, that's what we do. We are agnostic of technology, agnostic of domain, agnostic of anything. So we uh, spread across variety of things and we end up doing it. Uh, but this question by that uncle was so perceptive, uh, I went back to look at it as a story. Uh, if you were to look at it, uh, since I'm assuming most of you are manufacturing background, when does quality start in our conversation? Who could be called as the guru of quality? Everybody, right? Everyone who comes is a guru and everybody is there. So if you were to kind of look at it, uh, uh, so I put, I mean, when I teach a class on business excellence, I always use this. There is actually an evolution on thought of quality. The initial thought of quality was just a simple tailoring and tailors uh, statistical control processes, right? So SPC, you're basically the tailor stated the scientific management. The moment he said scientific management, uh, a lot of issues started coming on board. Then you had the statistical process control that were there and then that era kept on building till uh, a statistician who was not respected in the US but went on to uh, Japan and became very famous and then the world started telling his name. Can you name him? Timing. Timing. 
uh, all Deming's theories were kind of discarded and then the entire TQM story was adopted when the big uh, three manufacturers figured out that Toyota was killing them uh, purely by quality. So what exactly was Toyota able to achieve in that process in total quality management? That is the essence. My cost of production is kept as low as possible. The seven wastages or if all of you, I mean, one thing I found, I used to drive a program for leadership and manufacturing and uh, I used to see across leaders, they were all as conversant with Japanese as the old uh, army establishment used to be conversive in uh, Russian. Uh, so the seven mudda, mudda as they uh, call the waste stages that are there. But I would prefer to uh, use the word waste stage because I understand English and I can't understand, speak Japanese, although I spent enough time with them. Uh, but anyway, coming back. Now what exactly did Toyota achieve in the Toyota uh, uh, TQM as they call? idea of it is, it is not just one thing that gets you across the spectrum, but it is one thought that gets you across the spectrum. What is that thought? What is the fundamental essence of, this is not something that you get in any lectures that you uh, sit. What is the essence of your TQM or Sir, TPM? TPM is not total PowerPoint management, so, uh, which is what, whenever an organization says I'm in TPM, you can see excellent slides. So there's a total PowerPoint management that happens. So what is the essence of it? At all points of time, it was never the want or whether it is always the must have. If majority of the time the must and want is the underlying message which is missed. Majority of the time you must produce this, you must do this, you must get to it, right? But in that place you lose what is the want or what is your intrinsic maxima that you can get because you are chasing an extrinsic minima that is there. So if a customer says 5 mm to plus or minus 0.5 mm, yeah, let us rush to 5 mm plus or minus 0.5 mm. But what we miss is, I can actually give you 5 mm plus or minus 0.0005 not, not, not mm if I get my process right. Right? My intrinsic maxima could be much better than your extrinsic minima that is thrust on me. So the entire TQM saga got wasted in India, at least that's what I used to tell an NMCC, is to chase a mirage that is there. So quality as a mantra for business excellence had become a sprinting towards aping rather than sprinting towards your intrinsic maxima. The idea of entire the quality in the business is not about just the uh, quality focus as organizations always like to call. I am very, very quality focus. I am very much adapted to do these things, which is essentially, I am making my customer happy. But that customer is going to be only happy till he finds a new supplier. Right? After that, he is going to be ta-ta, bye-bye. Right? That's what happens. But usually, it's very difficult to find a new supplier to do it. But it's about what is the best that could be delivered. That is the essence of TQM that gets transferred to the tier one organizations in uh, uh, the Toyota's this thing, because at the end of the day, what is a car manufacturer? He's just an aggregator. The work happens with the tier ones and the tier twos, right? So it's about getting your tier ones 
aligned to your thought process the, so that you function as one body rather than multiple bodies coming to put together that philosophical thought bringing into it was the essence of it but somewhere down the road this mantra of business excellence lost that story somewhere uh, in this but people who do have good money do invest on good consultants pay them a heck a load of money and then the next stage of conversation started in the uh, 2000s so my mentor used to say if you have to survive you should always have a tla to survive what is a tla three letter acronyms so you should have a tqm tpm this that so you need to have some acronyms associated with your name and then you have to go but in the late 2000s this tla chase was chased to phraseologies and uh, say for example the agile manifesto like the communist manifesto right so it it is uh, it is the essence of it had become a phraseology something that you would want to say something is new that we have brought in in that process most of you who are quality professionals i am assuming or professionals it doesn't matter even if you have to buy the best vegetable in the market or you have to make your cycle time less in getting yourself ready before you go to office or be just in time like i was i dropped at 11:30 11:30 was 11:30 you can bring it into a practice and get things uh, going forward if you were to accept a fundamental story that never got told in the tqm era but started getting told later is the story of systems thinking the uh, super focus on the whole idea of a systems model and a systems thinking and that leading to your business process management or the one that uh, my previous speaker had alluded to the malcolm uh, uh, this thing uh, Uh, then the EFQM, uh, the European framework that is there, all of them are no more focused on diving deep. It is all focused on uh, a system level of approach, and all of them were focused on getting the system to be agile or flexible. In fact, the entire Toyota's production system is agility. Or uh, the or in the olden days, it used to be called. what was agile in the olden days called as yes. fms right flexible manufacturing system or whatever that is there so you are absolutely flexible that a car one could be a pink color uh, car and the car two could be a white and uh, this thing and your paint aerosol should not be affecting a pink aerosol should not affect or a red aerosol should not affect a white one that comes on the line so that is the essence of it Uh, i'm reasonably certain most of you may not have had a chance to be inside the toyota's plant because there is not anything excellent there it is just that people get to do their job but one story that toyota did but did not say much when the europeans did catch up on it uh, and you know uh, went about it the americans used the malcolm baldridge or the europeans used the fqm Uh, all of them were focused on system thinking and bringing in as a mantra somewhere down the road the quality story uh, seemed to be for people like me old and gray and it was all about system systems and we need to have a system thinking and bringing in agility and the whole idea of it or uh, you know my mentor as they say you have to keep reinventing uh, so now uh, the whole idea of problem solving is phrased as design thinking it used to be long ago called human factors uh, because you factor in the human in the uh, exercise so that the problem in space is more better defined and then you have to take it forward the next era uh, some of you who still have something left in you and then you have to be pushing the boundary further uh, is about in this story of or the quest of excellence is about sustainability now how do you get the sustainability into place immediately circular management uh, the thought of having things done uh, uh, you know 
the whole story about reducing the wastage at not my level but at a global level that's the whole about circular economy is all about uh, and so on and so forth that is there uh, but the essence of it i would hash back uh, or rather uh, circle back into and then say uh, is the mantra and the quality exercise is nothing but about the business excellence which the root word of it is what is the best that we could have done and what is the best that we could do which is essentially the intrinsic maxima be the focus than the extrinsic minima that is thrust on us uh, then there is uh, world is a lot more at peace and lot more uh, things to go about doing it so before i uh, wrap up i just thought i will uh, tell a couple of short stories of things that we could achieve just by a taking and solving this problem what was easy problem to solve was manufacturing so when we could take our uh, business model which is we i mean i like i mean i'm sure since puni and silvan is order of the day one thing that i always loved is the part where uh, puni and silvan actually gets really introduced in puni and silvan which is sural kartre so we used to call our management system sural management system which is essentially that you need to have a much more global view circular and not jump in and try to solve it's about if you were to track the character uh, puni and selvan in that novel it is about his intrinsic maxima it he never focuses on what extrinsically what uh, is thrust on him so we used to i mean i like to label it what was the easy problem to solve was the manufacturing issue so we could peacefully go get 40% 50% 60% improvement in productivity uh, where uh, the traditional approach would be very happy to call 2% and 5% as a great productivity improvement uh, and essentially we used to disrupt the processes and uh, ask you know approach but then we thought that's an easy problem to solve so let's take something a little bit more complex problem to solve uh one that we picked up and actually solved is to actually put together this emergency care system the trauma and emergency care system in faith in fact if you are not aware uh emergency care should not be normally functioning so it's a wasted expense one model that globally people push is uh the european model that uh, the uk model Uh, where they hire expensive consultants and they sit and then do which will not work so we picked our design thinking approach and we worked with the tamil nadu so we started everything uh, scratch up we call that program as tai uh, tamil nadu accident and emergency care initiative which was essentially because we said that's where a guy is going to be reborn if he is in an accident if somebody is in an accident if he is able to come to my center anywhere or i touch him at any place i should be able to save now that's an aspirational maxima that we would want to bring about how do we bring about budgets are not there wastages are there so many other things are there alignment of thoughts everything from a police man looking at it to a uh, ambulance coming into the place the one or eight ambulance and then picking up and then going of course we love uh the uh, thing to be managed only when the government hospitals but it let us be very honest about it If there is a large number of private hospitals which have very good capability and capacity not utilizing them is bad how do we bring them in an ecosystem that can work function like one unit rather than independent fingers so that has to be reconciled the data can't be reconciled after a year the data at a district level has to be reconciled on a daily basis uh, so we have now with not very sophisticated it systems looking at very simple way by which at 6 o'clock in the evening uh, we declared the day is 12 to 12 noon to noon by 6 o'clock in the evening you have a clear count of how many fatalities were there how many accidents were there things won't change but you at least know the data is there and you make that small improvement and 
until corona things were going great uh, post corona or during corona this ecosystem that was there in the emergency did come out to be a fairly good system to play of course the story went forward and we kind of i mean raj has started uh, uh, shifting his risk so i will stop here i guess so we went on i'm sorry yeah so we went on and took this story one of the things we found is money is not available private hospitals has a pr problem who is going to pay so we came up with a system of 48 hour of insurance so my first experience standing in front of a judge and asking so the 48 hours of assurance meaning a private hospital will be assured that if they treat somebody and they have a genuine expense those expenses will be get, uh, promised by the government uh, of course government of india is looking at it as an insurance and some governments where we advise uh, they have uh, pushing it as an insurance which will be a disaster because it is only an assurance to the private entity that do not be worried start doing the work right as long as the money is available and then we went on to change how police actually does the data collection recording of accidents and so on and so forth uh and you know the story continues uh i'll stop it here i'll be very happy if you have some questions to uh, have a conversation around it but thank you and have a great day Dr. Rangasamy, please come up on the stage and present a memento to Dr. Venkatesh. And uh, finally, Mr. Ramachandran, our National Executive Committee member.